All right, so greetings, ladies and gentle players. It is whatever day it happens to be, either when you are watching this live on Twitch or when I upload it live onto the YouTubes. Either way, it is a wonderful day for learning because today I found myself a professional game that was played recently that I thought was able to showcase some really, really basic ideas in Go at a high level. So you can see the importance of some of uh, the basic principles that we all like studying and trying to make sure that we all understand. But even professionals sometimes struggle with. There's actually, technically, okay, there's, technically there's two games I wanted to go over. I'm not sure I'm going to go for them both. I'm doing at least one right now. And now we now need to get into a disclaimer. I do want to point out while I am pointing uh, this game out to all of y'all, I've got nothing against either player. I know with a lot of people, you say something, you know, about so-and-so's move, and they think you mean the person itself, and they get all offended. I'm just pointing out that this game has some really good moves, some really not-so-good moves, and I kind of want to point out the ideas uh, between both of them so that y'all can learn from it. That said, it's cool to see some Western players throwing their hat in the ring and trying to take on their Asian counterparts. Kind of reminds me of um, when Korea was actually up and coming. Like, for a while, they couldn't beat any of the Japanese players. They were kind of at the bottom of the list. But late 20th century, or mid to late 20th century, somewhere in there, that changed, as we all know. And now, completely common to see them in the uh, top 10. Anyway, yeah, so now we kind of see the same thing with uh, Western pros. They're just getting into the professional circuit. And they, they got some, uh, you know, work to be able to uh, hit high that high up. So here we've got a Western 2-down professional versus uh, a 9-down professional from good old China, I do believe. Okay, so game starts off as games often do in the upper right hand corner with good old Ali taking a happy little 4-4 four, four points. Chinese 9 Don Professional takes the diagonal, so we're not, not allowing his opponent to play potentially a cross Fusaki. Okay, okay, okay. 3-4 is now facing the 4-4 four, four stone. Another 4-4 four, four taken from the 9-Don Pro. Black and closes. Fairly straightforward. Nowadays, we can go ahead and with this, say that we are potentially going to develop this area because as you know from walls, the broadside is essentially where it's falling down towards. So this is the area of influence, not this one there. Mention that for whatever DDQs might be watching. White and closes. You don't have to split. You don't have to approach on the inside. You don't have to go ahead and launch a move over in here. Or even do an attachment. These are all various options that you could do. White decides to enclose. Uh, black again takes another enclosure, so very, very territorial. That is completely A-OK. -okay. Little bit passive. You could see things like uh, the attachment. You could see things like a split. You could see things like an approach. You could see things like a 3-3. Three, three. All of these, again, are optional, including the enclose. There's not one move that you have to play here. You've got a variety of them. He chose to play this way. Now, what's fun about this game is right away, saw some pretty old school moves from White, and this is what first got it on my radar because we have an old timey split here from White. And now, sure enough, if you look at it into the uh, AI, you do see that sometimes the AI does prefer the split. Or, or, or does recommend it, I should say. I think it rarely does it prefer it, but it is like on like one of the top three or four moves. We're doing a pro game. We are looking at a pro game, yes. So I like the old timiness of it. 
Uh, it is off center. If you play here, you're looking at this one into this one, and then potentially here, here, into here. And then this kind of gets a little awkward because the question is like, what are you going to do with this one now? Here we're further away, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The approach from below uh, makes sense. We could approach from above, as I'm sure you also know. However, the only downside about that is you have a small knight into a large knight, which is not full on territory. And if we make this kind of shapely doodles, well, white just lives now. Because if we go and say you can't live this way, then we're just going to go ahead and live this way. And if you say, well, nope, you're not going to live that way then, well, then you're just going to go ahead and live this way. So it is really difficult to kill this one stone. And if we do make this sort of shape, I might regret it a little bit later. So approaching from below makes perfect sense. We push up. I'm surprised to see the sweep and not the kick. The kick is a little bit more uh, aggressive, or not aggressive, um, that's what I'm looking for, severe, on account that you're actually making physical contact with your opponent's stone. Black chose to do a sweep instead, which isn't physically making contact with the opponent's stone, which means it is just that much more less severe. And the interesting thing about that is because it's that much less severe, Professionals in particular, and you start seeing this in Hydon and above play in general, you start looking for that razor's edge on where you can get just that much more out of your opponent's stones. Because maybe there's something a little bit slow, or they've overextended just a little bit too much, do you think? Or their timing for leaving an invasion point is a little bit too uh, uh, a little bit too far gone. They should have covered it. Like something like that, right? And you try to like look for those things so you can plan on how to squeeze that position uh, more for yourself. And here, White's like, you know what? He's not actually touching me right now. So I'm going to play away. Try to get just that much more out of it. Black goes ahead and says, my territory is mine. White says, okay. I'm going to kill your stone, though. And Black says, well, you can't kill my stone if I am connecting. And White says, true. But now I can defend myself, and I got two stones for free. So play a little bit loose, play a little bit loose. But that's the kind of thing that we're looking for here. Very unsurprising to see it from a professional player. Now, the real question, though, what's Black going to do? Mm-hmm. Looking for potential large-scale surround, because you can envision this is not allowed to be played. Actually, look at, let's make it easier to look at. Let's make those uh, white. There we go. This right here is not allowed to be played. Because if this turns into a solid white wall, I know some people say the AI hates influence. So in a couple of games of mine this week, that's not true. AI loves influence if it reaches critical mass. This would be an example of influence reaching critical mass. This would just be way too large. AI would love what you're doing if you got away with it. Right? So, okay. We're looking at this board. White's trying to... White's playing, White's playing a middle game. You could tell from the attachment and the light play here. We're obviously trying to, like, threaten surrounds. So what do we do? What do we do, chat? Recommends. Who's got the recommends? Who's got top opening theory? Oh, wait. Oh, wait is here. Oh, we're going far. Oh, wait seems like your threat. Your <sighs> This reminds me of good old Disan's favorite expression. And that is now you're playing emo go because you're putting a large knight directly in front of your opponent. So he's going to cut that to pieces, right? F17, get an outside approach. I like it. Okay. D10, just let it happen. You could do D a move like D10, just let it happen. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. Totally could. Totally could. So black sides to 3-3. Three, three. 
I do, whoops, hold. I do like the idea of the outside approach. If I understand your F-17 correctly, you're looking to do this. A very, very straightforward, uh, you're, you're looking to sort of try to get in the good old ladder breaker so you can go ahead and cut your opponent and keep uh, hurting him. I, I like that idea. I like that idea. That idea is pretty good. That idea slaps, as the kids say. Instead, Black went just for the 3-3. Three, three. Now, fundamentally, you know where I stand on this. I think it's a very, very bold strategy. Your opponent says, I want to play an influential game, and you decided, I'm getting all of it. Ladder doesn't work. The ladder will work when you back off, though. Like, uh, the approach into the back off is more of an expansion in Sente where it should be Gotei. Does that make sense? Like, if we go bop, bop into, like, wherever. We expect this to be Gotei for, for Black now because you don't have to play anything. But you do because the ladder now works for you, right? So depending on, like, how you play this, we expect to be able to expand in Sente rather than uh, in uh, Gotei. That's why I like the approach, the essay approach. All right, so good old Ali says, I am giving up all of the influence. Now, maybe this was planned. It's entirely possible that Ali, being, you know, up and coming Western professional, maybe he's feeling good about his game. Maybe he's like, you know what? You want to play an influential game? I'll give you all of the influence you can possibly imagine, and I'll strangle you with it. Hard to say. Hard to say. But, as expected, we got the influence, we got the sente, and now we've got extensions. So we're rapidly using exactly what we're looking for. We're grabbing that influence. The bottom is threatening to be really, really huge. So now we need to see how we're going to go ahead and reduce that territory, or that potential territory, the influence as it were. Now there are a lot of really cool options here. You could do a uh, shoulder hit. You can probably still do um, good old shoulder hits here as well. Um, Got to be a little bit aware that you still have a cutting point here and there's some stuff down in there that could be that could be an issue uh do, 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 do. what else can we do i mean there's like the brain dead just random pincer that some people like to play moves that i will highlight in red i think you can use bl blue and red right or does that break for colorblind i'll use black i'll, I'll highlight in black so moves that I wouldn't want to see here. I would not want to see the Atari of the One Stone. The Atari of the One Stone would be too slow. Wouldn't want to see that. I wouldn't want to see the attachment here that some of you might have considered because it just strengthens white on the outside across like half the board while we're just trying to take like this area here, right? So I wouldn't want to see that. Um, what else would I want to see? I think that about really covers it as far as, far as uh, too slow is concerned. Wouldn't want to see the attachment, the good old clamp here, because a little bit too slow. A little bit too slow. So we've got to keep our eye on the big on the big board. Now black plays a standard follow up. Okay. Well. That's that's fine. It is a big move if we don't play it. White can either play here or white can play here, the diagonal being more common. And then from here, what are we doing? We're looking at a professional game, so I thought it's really, really good to go over there, God King. I think it's nice, simple, and easy to follow, so I loves it. Um, but yeah, the, the diagonal here would be very, very painful because you have to decide, well, am I going to play this way? And then, like do this kind of jisaki am i gonna extend 
and do this kind of thing. Like, you know, what are we, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? No, oh, not laughing at anybody. I love looking for games like this on my channel, on my channel. What is my favorite series on my channel? It's the Legend 88 versus, versus uh, like the Five and Seven Don games. Not because I like laughing at a professional stomping on, you know, lower ranked players, but because it's really easy to follow and there's a ton of stuff that you can learn from those. And same thing with this. Same thing with this. There's a lot of things you can learn from it. So here, White's like, hey, that's Gote. I have Tente. So, all right. Bam. Going to keep you low. And to be fair, Black now knows he's in trouble. If he responds to this, when does he stop responding to it? In one move? In two moves? In three moves? That's getting to be a pretty solid wall, right? The whole thing that we mentioned that we don't want to have happen. So Ali saw this, apparently. Realized, okay, if I answer this move right now, I am going to be in scrunchified in Sente. That's going to be a losing position for me. So, he's trying to follow up his last move and get an attack going. B4. What's B4? B4, 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 Yonk. Problem with B4 is this is committing at the very least to running away, right? Here, here, into here. B4 is a very tough move to live with. This inside pincer, when you've got uh, an enclosure already in place, gets kind of rough to try to live with it. Even if you succeed, you can see you are you are giving away quite a bit. Like you're never going to be able to invade this ever again because this is going to be a solid wall, probably in sente. So we're going to then build this side of it up, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six lines of territory which is the equivalent of running along a solid wall on the seventh line, right? Seven lines giving one, two, three, four, five, six lines of territory. Same thing here. That's a lot. So instead, he, does, he tries to do the traditional pincer. And a lot of 3-3 games do get this way. You invade, you give a wall up. If they extend from the wall, you have to fight it. Well, why do you have to fight it? Well, it's simple. Because you can't allow your opponent to just take 7th line territory. I mean, that's just math, right? Like, if you're getting 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever points, and they're getting 6 line by line, yeah, you're going to lose that game. So the 3-3 three, three is a commitment to reduce later. So here we see Ali understanding that and committing to reduce later. So here's his commitment. Black says, or White says, uh, I'm going to lean on you, and you're going to give me more influence, and I'm going to use it to hang you. And I'm also going to point out Ilyascu, throwing down the Prime sub. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Much appreciated, good sir. Diagonal. I will also point out one of the reasons why I went over this is because I absolutely love uh, seeing this shortly after my book launched because I do cover this exact variation as one of the warnings for the 3-3 variations and what you should expect later on, right? Because, oh yeah, black is just being leaned on because this does under attack. So we're leaning on strength and the top is strength. Top is strong. You're not killing this. Nothing happened this does ever, Right? You're, ne you're never doing anything to this. So we see the lean against it, because it's super, super strong. We can't make this area much stronger than it already is. So we're getting all these free moves for the center of the board, where as we can already see, like all of the things are happening here, you know? Okay, so we can see that. Now here's something that's really good too. Let's see if I can ask you the question without giving away the answer. Um, we're in mid-game. 
board position aside, what should we be doing in mid-game? So essentially, there's two things. If we're not defending ourselves, we're doing what? I think that's vague enough that I haven't given away the answer yet. Killing? It may be fun, but we can't plan to kill. Especially at pro level. You can't like be like calling your shots like you're knocking a ball out of the park, right? You can't be like, yeah, 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 right over there, man. Yeah, right right over there in left field, we're, we're, we're hitting a home run. We are attacking. You're half right. I like in bigifying. That's also correct. Now, if we take both of those ideas and put them together, we are going to attack to embigify. So we aren't attacking to kill, we're attacking for profit. Yes. So, to that end, this is exactly what we're trying to do. Because he's not like, I'm going to kill this one stone. Yeah, this one stone, oh man, it's totally dead. Check me out, bro, I'm going to kill it. Like, nah. Plenty of room to run away. But... This is still really, really big. He is profiting nicely. Huge friggin' corner. But he's not going all in on it. So, right away in this game, I had the old-timey split that I liked. I liked the attacking for profit. And uh, some leany things that I mentioned recently. So these three things I really, really love. Uh, this game. Don't know why I want to wedge now with black. Oh, what, here? No, if, if you're a player who cannot, let's see, a one-point jump without wanting to, like, throw a stone in the middle of it, oh, you got to find a way to stop doing that. You got to find a way to stop doing that. That's going to str strengthen your opponent. You're creating another weak group. All the things are going wrong there. Black's like, uh, take me seriously, senpai. I'm attacking you. White defense. Very simple. Black's coming out. White threatens the Hane at the head of two and three stones. Because they want to be surrounded. So yeah, push, why not? The Hane is sweet. The Hane is amazing. Black's like, please don't Hane at the head of two and three of my stones. Plays the Hane, threatens to cut, okay. Forcing move first, forcing move first, then defend. Threatening to cut, is defended, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. At this point, I'm going to say something and people are not going to like me saying it. At this point, it is very, very, very tough for black to win this game. Who can tell me why that is? Strategically, what do we see happening on this board? Who can tell me? Who can get it accurately? Black has nothing to embiggen. That's a good that's a that is actually really hurtful, yeah. All the territory that black has is the territory that black's gonna probably have in the end of the game. We can't point to something on this board right now and say he's gonna go grab that Sunzi as Sente. Because we don't really know where that is. That's true. Um, Black Sun Group attack forever, ever? Possibly, but will probably live. The problem is, you can already see hints of, ooh, yes, Peyton got it in one, as I would imagine a Seven Dawn would. As Black struggles in the middle, you can already imagine White following. And if white follows, we can already see a new area spawning for white. Not even taking into consideration what this might be worth with, like, one extra move. So, we're under attack. We have to live, but we don't see victory in life. It's very rough. Very rough indeed. Okay, so black tries to live. White answers. Aggressive double Hane. And we cannot fault Black in the slightest for it. Because if he just plays this, like we already discussed, we can already see very, very bad things happening. 
because now we're on the 10th line from the right side that's growing, right? Um, I was mentioning AI's evaluation at the end. So we have the Atari here into a connect. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, that's right. Into a drop down to surround. Black plays the Atari. We go ahead and just connect that easy peasy. Black's leaning for shape. Since he leaned, Black defends himself. Threatened to be surrounded. Doesn't want to be surrounded, so he plays the Hane. Which immediately White takes. Black's like, just let me out of here. I can't be surrounded. I, I, if, I'm, if I'm surrounded, I'm dead. So we take. Profit on a left-hand side, potentially. Again, not trying to kill the middle. Always looking for the profit. Always looking for the profit. Uh, so plays there. Threads to cut through. And just taking the points. Just taking the points. Just taking the points. Do, 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 do. I'm just taking the points. There into there is fine. I also love, 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 love games where you're reminded the importance of sente. Like right now, it is possible to keep this group cut off. Right? Just reinforce the cutting stones and you're fine. Which is why white doesn't take the bait. He's not going to be like, bonk, bonk, bonk. Securing a decent amount of territory. But at the same time, you'd also be reinforcing on the attack in the middle against these two stones and this whole area. So that'd be very unfortunate. So, vital point taken. Thank you very much. Don't get killed. Now we extend out. Still trying to not be surrounded. Two stones are now fully dead. Now, we do have 0.5i in Sente. We can take this. And we can have an I in Sente. If white connects it, we don't. That would be unfortunate. So what we need right now is black to not be dead locally on another group. Or another, not another group, sorry. Uh, another I somewhere out in the middle. Tries to attach for it. But this is simple divide and conquer, right? Weak group, weak group. Don't let them connect, right? Don't let him connect. Tries the Hane. You're strong in the area on both sides. So you call him out on it. Huge corner. Black tried to do something. Not a whole lot we can do. Leaves the option of which group gets, the, gets to live completely in Black's uh, hands. Not even connecting to reinforce, instead just reinforcing the middle, because the middle is where black is currently being murdered. Black tries to come out. Points out this isn't an eye, and defends a cutting point, which is great. Tries to come out. But that was a small knight. Small knights can be cut. So, calls him out on that one, sadly. Drop down simply gets cut off because the right side is also still large and there's no discernible eye shape in here yet either. Black has four corners, white will win. Um, Black can be actually dead in the lower left-hand corner. It's not alive yet. He needs another move in there in order for uh, this shape to be alive. So, he's got, got 3.5 corners. Doesn't quite have four of them. Doesn't quite have four of them yet. Extend on out. Simple drop down to protect the, the thing. This isn't a problem because you can go bop, bop. Actually, go do a few things, actually. Yeah, bop, 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 bop. And then you're fine. Just don't get uh, killed here. 
attachment, drops down, Hane, threatens a ko, always take first, basic rule of ko, even if you have no intention of fighting, as white does not, you always take first, poke, 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 Preventing this from being an eye. Trying to make it have be an eye. Prevents it from being an eye. Trying to get an eye. And connect solidly. I like how time and again, we see white defending himself. He's not going all in, trying to be risky, trying to kill black. Black might be dead. We don't know yet. After all this, we're still not sure. But what we do know definitively is that's not plan A. Plan A isn't, okay, I'm a boss, my opponent's dead, mic drop, get out of my game, right? It's not like that. He's being solid, he's defending himself, he's attacking for profit, and if during the process of that, Black drops dead, that ain't his fault, right? Cops come around asking, it's like, I, 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 it was like that when I got here. You know? You can see why I absolutely like this game. Black's trying to reduce the middle. I mean, he has to. This is an insanely large area. And it's way larger than uh, essentially just the top area in that corner. No longer any threats here. But now there is a threat going bop, bop, bop for a kill. So he defends. Which begets a defense. Which begets a defense. And a defense. That's pretty well killing the corner now. That's just, that's just dead. We've just accepted at this point. Uh, yeah, corner's just dead. Corner's just dead. That means that's a ton of fragging territory. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, regretfully, also not alive yet, has to take the side too. Then we clamp, I think, right? Yes. And then we play down here, because if we Hane, Black's still dead. So, there's that. But regretfully, there's still a little bit of an itty bitty problem here, as you can see here. It's a little bit of a co. Black says no co. Okay. Then I will surround. Because the outside is super solid, super thick. These aren't cutting stones any longer. These are hard off the board. So no real way for these stones to go to. Most of this was just defensive stuff. Black Hane's on the in. Try to get something done in the middle. He's completely surrounded, so you can see that he's taking his life very seriously, playing all the force moves, making sure that he's got maximum eye shape here. Connects on up, still not trying to kill anybody, just dropping down, making solid shape, getting a lot of points. So Black gets to probably live here. Until he decided not to connect. Now he's in a little bit of trouble because this cutting point opens up. If we Atari down, more dead stones. We Atari over. This side's completely cut off. Forcing move for him. Trying to get in something. Trying to cut the area that's not alive, unfortunately. Defended. Same thing, sadly. But then again, defended. Not going all in, being like, okay, now I'm going to play here and just see what happens, right? And we know what happened. Be like here, here, and here or something. Now we can't connect out. We can't push through. This would get... That gets pretty ugly, right? So always looking after his shape. Where is this game from? Uh, this game was from a tournament recently called... 
called, 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 called. What were you called? I suck with Chinese, so I'm going to paste it in chat. There we go, it's from that. There we go, it's from that. It's the first, whatever that pronunciation is, uh, cup round one. That features a whole bunch of stuff. Where Western players get to play against Asian players. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Black's essentially, for the most part, surrounded, so he's just trying to live. White still doesn't care. He's just going on next biggest move, baby. Plan A is never, yes, go for go. Plan A is never, ever, ever, I'm killing you. It's I'm going to keep you honest. And if you don't respond to things like here, then yeah, sure. You're going to lose all of your eyes and you're going to be dead. Absolutely, 100%. But he's not going all in trying to kill the opponent. In a lot of respects, this is very much a nice, smooth, basics game. Just looking after shape. Looking after your cutting points. Tacking for profit when you find a weak group. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. All these lovely little forcing moves. Black's playing a big end game. Unfortunately, uh, for Black, uh, he's not alive in the middle of the board. So that end game was unfortunately not his to play. Uh, so he goes ahead and resigns here. Because if he didn't resign here, White would connect, or and then Black would play here. White would poke at it. And then you lost your other eye. So you'd be dead in the middle of the board. Uh, unfortunately, 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 after this move, yeah, he really needed like one more move here to be alive. But that would unfortunately also just keep giving more and more forcing moves uh, to the opponent. And if we did that kind of thing, how much would we be down by... Um, probably that, right? Probably looking at that for endgame. Estimate score. So white would be up by about 30 points, give or take. Yeah, it looks like white would be up by about 30 points. In the actual game, decided to play endgame instead. Unfortunately, it wasn't live in the middle of the board. So game ended that way. So yeah, I liked this game a lot. I liked the game an awful lot. I thought it was nice, easy to follow, whether you're a Don player or a DDQ. It showed some very basic ideas as to why attacking for profit is always always comes before attacking to kill and how that can be very, very powerful, especially on a open board like we saw here, right? An open board here, a weak grouping uh show attacking for profit is tremendous now some people will probably say i bet the difference between these players white's ai accuracy was just a lot higher that that's the difference you can feel the trap closing in on you can't you D you feel it it's getting a little, uh, getting a little warm in there. It's like, hmm, I think something's heating up around here. Uh, this nice witch in the woods told me it's safe in here. But when we throw this game into the AI for a performance analysis, you might be surprised. To see the performance is not that high. 50% for Ali and 69 for the 9P. Not bad. Not bad. It's not like, oh, well, this person was like probably the 9P probably has like all the AI moves down pad and uh, his accuracy is probably in like 
in the 80 percents no 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 no. even amateur players get around 60 but it's the it's it's uh the ones that he picked that aren't that still uh you know won them the day either way i love this game i hope you love this game too and uh yeah a lot of learn from it i i heavily suggest reviewing it at least once or twice at least once or twice <laughs>